Did you know that apart from being obsessed with the moon, Lord Ene was the real source of energy in our nation and now that he's gone we are in absolute darkness. If you happen to spot him please hit the subscribe button and completely destroy the notification bell. Okay, to be completely honest, I enjoy the chaos that Oda creates with news like this because right now the entire One Piece community is on fire and divided between Garp stands and Blackbeard fangirls. But all of that is set aside because I have decided to take on the tedious task of putting an end to the debates because today we will analyze the upcoming clash between these two monsters. We will first and foremost examine what determines the outcome of a fight in the world of One Piece, the hockey level of each side, the skills and experience, Devil fruits possessed by both parties and of course the true motivation behind Blackbeard's abduction of Kobe and Garp's choice to rescue him because his sudden decision to risk it all for one marine doesn't add up. Don't get me wrong, I love Kobe but his importance to the current structure of the story is minor at best. So thinking back to the beginning of the series, it really hasn't been made clear what exactly determines the outcome of a battle in this wacky world that Ichiro Oda has created. In the first few chapters of the manga, there was an emphasis on devil fruit powers and brute strength being the prime choice of whether you want to fight or not. It was like this with Luffy vs Arlong, Don Craig and Sir Crocodile. It became even more confusing as time went by and honestly this is one of the things I love about One Piece because you never know what Oda will do next. But if we're being honest, it's a combination of all these elements because with every arc came a new definition of power. During Ennis Lobby, it was Devil Fruits and Rokushiki. Impel Down and Marine Ford were all about Haki and Devil Fruits. But each time powerful individuals have clashed, it's always turned into a battle of wits and durability. Kaido and Luffy, Zoro and King, Sanji and Queen, the list goes on because the whole of Marine Ford was basically a battle of durability. Who would fall first? The power of Haki is rumored to have been woven into the story as far back as the first chapter of the manga. So what is this mysterious power known as Haki? Haki is a mysterious power that allows the user to channel their own willpower for a variety of purposes. It can sense people's spiritual energy and predict their actions, provide a protective coating of spiritual energy to the user and for a select group of special people overpower the will of others. And just like that it all comes down to this element because your level of Haki determines your durability. As seen with characters like Mihawk who can take out entire fleets of ships with a single slash of his blade or Luffy who is capable of taking unfathomable amounts of damage while still standing up to win his battles. But does that mean we completely avoid the benefit of experience? I don't think so because other characters have conquered the One Piece world by utilizing personal experience. Of course Luffy is by far the worst example of this but IQ yeah sure he has that. But characters such as Sengoku, Sanji, Shiki, Sakura and even Blackbeard have been seen strategizing and winning many battles through the combat knowledge they have acquired over the years. Now if you think there is a mistake somewhere and Tish shouldn't be there, remember he managed to fool Whitebeard for many years before revealing his true intentions at the most opportune time. The entirety of Marineford can be considered as his plan. Starting with the battle of wheels, we have the two big fish on both sides. How powerful is their haki and who has the most powerful of the two? On the marine side, we have the legendary Garp the Fist, who was known to have squared up against the Pirate King himself in his prime and he is said to have fought alongside Roger to defeat the Conqueror of Kings, Rox D. Zebek. Garp's armament haki is of exceptional quality. With just one enhanced punch, he defeated the infamous pirate Don Chin Zhao. Now, Garp's haki ability is so powerful that he used to destroy mountains for training. Do you lot know how mad that is? This man should definitely come around my house and kill a few rats. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. His rank in the marines does not reflect his abilities, hence the slander he receives from fans. But the true question posed is, does he possess all three forms of haki and is it what it used to be? Now of course in order to have gone up against Roger, Gap had to possess all three forms of haki. It's already been established that thus far he is known to have had the most powerful armament haki. But there isn't a sufficient amount of info to make a conclusion on his conquerors and observation. However, we can't forget that Dr. Fishbone recommended that Kobe ask Gap how to master observation haki, suggesting he has enough expertise in it to mentor others. 
But if I had to guess how powerful his observation and armament haki are, it would probably be on par with Ray Lee's, or even far superior, and so that only leaves the power of the Supreme King. Now simply saying he had the power of the Supreme King because he fought Roger is not responsible of me. So let's go through the three qualities a Supreme King must possess. This is a foolproof method provided by the Grand Line reviewer himself, Liam. Firstly, does he have the qualities of a king? Well, he seems to have little to no kingly ambition. He refused the position of admiral, although in his defense, mainly because he didn't want to serve directly under the celestial dragons, but he never showed any interest to rule over anything or anyone. But what it means to be king differs from character to character in One Piece. So in conclusion, no, he does not possess the qualities of a king. But we've seen characters who possess the power of the supreme king serve under others. I mean, Ace had no kingly ambition, but he possessed it. Does he have the power to overwhelm? I think this is self-explanatory and the answer is yes. I mean, if you don't believe me, just ask Luffy and Ace. Number 3. Does he have the embodiment of spirit? Well, yes, he does. The fear he is known to strike in the hearts of pirates has been one of the major reasons for his fame. Gop has a strict code of honor and an obsession to uphold justice much similar to Akainu, which is quite ironic considering Akainu made a donut out of his grandson. Too soon? Yeah, too soon. He's known to have never backed down from any fights. Basically, if you are a smart little pirate, you would stay out of his way. His will to uphold justice was so powerful that even when his own family was to be killed, he stood his ground. So in conclusion, he does possess the power of the Supreme King, because all you have to do is check out at least two of the requirements, which brings us to his age and how it affected him because yes, he stood his ground that day but in the end he wavered when he faced Luffy. So maybe, just maybe, much like Roger this man gets a little bit more dangerous when protecting the ones he loves, after all it would make sense as to why he suddenly decided to go after Blackbeard. Or maybe it's my excuse for him. But we can't forget the hard fact that age plays a major role in hockey use, so currently it's not looking good for Garp. Okay, so on to big fish number two, Mr. Blackbeard. In terms of Haki, we haven't seen much of it from Teach. Rather, we've only seen him use the power of the Devil Fruits, but we know from his Viva card that he does possess both armament and observation Haki. And I believe he does possess the power of the Supreme King, because I highly doubt Oda would give him such a handicap considering he is the story's final and main antagonist. Unless Oda decided to prove a point by separating the two, one on the Devil Fruit side and the other on the hockey side. But the question is how powerful it is in comparison to Garps. When we compare the ambitions, sadly, Blackbeard seems far more sinister and powerful. He is like Luffy but darker. He believes dreams never die and such thoughts as we have seen give certain individuals monster-like qualities in terms of power. But that isn't enough. A bit of antagonist plot armor would do the trick. Simply because Garp refused the position of Admiral does not mean he is not as powerful as one. In fact, I would argue that current Garp is on par with current admirals. Yes, that includes the fleet admiral Akainu. So in this power of Haki, I have to give it to Garp. Because in the recent volumes of the manga, Teach fled at the sight of Ray Lee. Even though Ray Lee admitted to the fact that maybe he wouldn't be able to win against him in his current state, hinting to a possible future. We can assume because he didn't want to risk losing. After all, his crew was not available at that time. If things had gone sour, Teach would have most likely lost. Now, I think somehow he is able to weigh how powerful a person's haki is because there was a time he commented on how powerful Luffy's haki had become. Not forgetting the time that Van Oga spotted Akainu approaching, he simply chose to flee. Garp may not be as powerful as he once was, but let's face it, when we talk about Blackbeard vs Garp, we all know it means Blackbeard and crew vs Garp. Because Teach has been known to fight dirty and has only taken on opponents one on one on rare occasions. The evidence is on the screen. Whitebeard and recently even for Law, he needed his crew's help to fight. Which brings us to the crews on both ends and their allies. How powerful is their haki? And this is where the two are now set apart because currently the known individuals assisting Gop on this mission are not really proficient in using haki. So again, this doesn't look good for Gop because Teach has an overwhelming amount of subordinates with great potential in haki use. Helmampo is basic at best and honestly in terms of crews, Blackbeard wins 
wins this by a landslide. His crew possesses people such as Shiryu, Katerina Devon, and Van Orger. And these guys are known for their great feats of power. As a matter of fact, the only way Teach could lose over Roberto of Haki is if Aokiji switches sides. And even then, I have to be honest, it's not a given. So maybe, just maybe, Bogart has a few tricks up his sleeves. And I'm praying for this to be true. Because while Gup might possess more potent Haki than Teach, I'm not sure if he can repeat the acts of power he displayed during the God Valley incident. He's far too old for that and he would lose if he single-handedly took them all on. And it's a bit too late for Oda to reveal new allies on Gup's side who possess great Haki. So maybe, just maybe, again, just really, really maybe because I really don't want Gup to lose this fight. Dragon might make an appearance and we might witness the father and son duo at play. But yeah, Teach and crew win the overall battle of Haki. And now for the skills and experience. Obviously, this isn't exactly brain science because Garp defeats Blackbeard any day. Monkey T. Garp is a hero best known for repeatedly cornering and fighting the late pirate king Gold D. Roger. Now, Whitebeard regards Garp as one of the few people who has known the sea since the time of Gold Roger. His story remembers him as the greatest marine to have ever lived. If you don't believe me, how about this? Shiki the Gold Lion attacked Marineford a week before Roger's execution. I don't know the exact details, but it's rumored that he found out about his relationship with Whitebeard, and he couldn't handle the rejection, but irregardless of this, Garp alongside Sengoku faced him together. They defeated him after a grueling battle that destroyed half the town, and Garp was severely injured but not dead. And yeah, while we don't know much about Shiki, we know this for sure. He was part of Zebek's crew and he was among the greatest rivals of Roger. Not forgetting, he was the only person apart from Luffy to have ever successfully escaped from Impel Down. So that in its own right is quite impressive. So yeah, he was definitely like a cockroach, very hard to kill. Garp is one of the most powerful fighters seen so far in the series. Despite his advanced age, he still possesses incredible physical strength. He can throw iron cannonballs like baseballs, smash through brick walls with his fists, and throw a massive ball and chain many times the size of the thousand sunny. I challenge you to say that 10 times. Garp also possesses a monstrous punching ability as his nickname Garp the Fist attests. His unconventional training regime was responsible for his grandsons Luffy and Ace becoming formidable fighters in their own right. He turned Kobe and Helmampo into seasoned fighters in months, demonstrating his true depth as an instructor. In terms of combat, Garp has had several decades worth of experience in both combat and navigating the harshest oceans within the volatile new world. He's also a marine hero, having cornered and fought Goldie Roger several times. At some time, Roger also claimed that he and Garp had nearly killed each other several times. Garp previously had defeated and nearly killed off Don Chin Zhao, whose bounty was worth around 500 million bellies in his prime and was said to be capable of splitting a continent with a headbutt. He is also a leader as a marine vice admiral and commanding officer of the 153rd marine branch. In comparison to Blackbeard, well, we will find out. In addition to his legendary strength, he has incredible durability and pain tolerance, as demonstrated when he was slashed by Captain Morgan's axe hand, only to recover seconds later, with no obvious pain and seemingly unaware that he had been struck at all. This was because he had fallen asleep before being attacked. He was able to get back on his feet after being punched by Luffy at point blank range in gear second without losing consciousness, and it should be noted that the punch was only possible because Garp allowed Luffy to land the strike. Even after that punch, he was able to fight alongside Sengoku against the Blackbeard pirates. Garp is also very agile, as evidenced by his leap into the sky and intercepting Marco as he flew to save Ace. He has also proven to be extremely fast, as he managed to avoid all the straw hats in order to reach a sleeping Luffy, which really caught Zoro off guard. Whitebeard clearly admires Garp's strength, as he mentioned him during his conversation with Shanks. It should also be noted that aside from the cannonballs he throws, Garp is not seen carrying any weapons, implying that he he is most likely a hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Another example of Garp's strength was when he easily struck down Marco of the Whitebeard Pirates, despite the latter having his Devil Fruit abilities activated at the time, knocking him back which Kizaru and Akainu seemed unable to do. Alright now, let's look at Marshall D. Teach. How exactly does he compare? Teach has proven to be a formidable pirate in his own right, with Shanks, Whitebeard and the Gorosei all describing him as unsettling. He demonstrated his skill as a tactician by joining the Whitebeard pirates to find the Dark Dark Fruit and deceiving his crew for decades in order to plan his future betrayal of them. 
He even devised a successful convoluted plan to join the Shichibukai and recruit the most powerful prisoners to bolster his crew. Not to mention he also stole the power of the dead white beard to become the first person to use two devil fruits at the same time. Marco speculated that he already had plans to do so because he invaded Imperial Dawn for most of the war and allowed white beard and his crew to exhaust and injure themselves fighting the marines, Shichibukai and the admirals. Teach would return in the final stage and finish white beard with the help of his crew. With his his growing notoriety, the Gorosei feared he would succeed Whitebeard as a Yonko. This was proven correct when Teach took over Whitebeard's territory after defeating the remnants of the Whitebeard pirates led by Mako in the Payback War. Now he demonstrates his skills as a captain by forming a crew of 5 people in a matter of months while being pursued by Ace. This demonstrates a strong sense of charisma and leadership as his crew rushed to his defense when he was attacked by Ace. Blackbeard, now an admiral, amassed a newly formed fleet of loyal pirates. Teach is also shown to possess superhuman strength. In his younger days, he left a scar on the face of the Yonko Shanks, who had become wary of him after their duel and referred to his wound as a fatal mistake of carelessness. Teach was once offered the position of commander on Whitebeard's ship, which was notable because he did not have a devil fruit at the time. Demonstrating his strength was on par with the other commanders. In a one on one battle, he defeated Podgas the Ace, he easily defeated Juari Boni, a West Generation member with a bounty of 140 million bellies, and later Boa Hancock, a former warlord who has a bounty of about 1.6 billion? I think it's, I think it's 1.6 billion, and damn, that's, that's a lot. Teach has been shown numerous times to have incredible superhuman endurance, as evidenced when he took on Ace and Whitebeard's attacks, taking Luffy's gum gum jet pistol to the gut before collapsing against a stone wall. These are significant because his abilities increase the amount of damage he takes, and it could have been fatal. He was also able to take Drafkla D Water Law's awakening abilities, which is, which is quite impressive because even Big Mom could not take that attack. When it comes to the crew skill and experience, again, not much is known about Garp's crew, but as for the Blackbeard Pirates, because the Admiral was a former subordinate member of the Whitebeard Pirates 2nd Division, a former warlord of the sea, and is now one of the four emperors, they are an extremely powerful crew and are currently recognized as one of the four strongest pirate crews in the world. I, I, I almost said pirates crews. The Blackbeard pirates were a formidable force to be reckoned with even when they were only 5 men strong. Their first appearance, which was an attack on Drum Island, was so overwhelming that the island's egotistical king Wapo fled without even trying to fight back. The Blackbeard pirates were also able to easily gain access to Impure Down's level 4, though Impure Down was at the time admittedly strained due to multiple riots. Uh, we have Luffy to thank for that. With the exception of San Juan Wolf, every member had taken a direct hit from Sengoku's shockwave attack and recovered quickly with only minor injuries. Aside from great endurance and strength, each member has a special crew position, with the exception of the new recruits, whose positions are quite unknown. Yeah, these are quite unfamiliar faces. Though how well they perform such jobs is unknown. Van Orga the sniper is an expert marksman, able to shoot a flock of seagulls from such a distance that the straw hat pirates couldn't even see see the island he was on. He can predict where a bullet will strike and run at breakneck speed to avoid it. Oga is now the captain of Blackbeard's, what, what is it, third ship? Yeah, third ship. Despite wearing tap dancing shoes, Lafte, Laf, Lafate, Lafute, Laf, Lafote, whatever it is, let's just go with Lafte. Lafte, the navigator and former sheriff in the West Blue, was able to sneak undetected into the capital of the world government and the domain of the celestial dragons, Marijo, Marijoice, Marijoa, Marijuo. Okay, uh, these words are a bit hard, so guys, please just, uh, just, just bear with me. He was able to infiltrate during a meeting between several high-ranking marine officials, including the former fleet admiral Sengoku and three warlords of the sea. He also appears to have a devil fruit ability that allows him to sprout wings on his back, allowing him to fly, and the power of hypnosis as well. Though whether these abilities are linked or not is unknown. I think they're unlinked, in all honesty. I, I just believe that this guy has a certain talent when it comes to people. He knows how to manipulate them to do whatever he wants them to do. Laftei has now become the captain of the fifth ship of Blackbeard's fleet and has earned the epithet Demon Sheriff. This isn't even half of it because the rest of the crew is made up of people with experience and skills in their respective fields. They are the worst of the worst, the Titanic 10. So it all depends on who Gap shows up with. 
So for the two big fish, Garp wins the battle of experience and skills but overall Blackbeard wins again. Which brings us to Devil Fruits and honestly it's a no brainer because the Blackbeard crew win this as well. So that's one for Blackbeard. Which only leaves the motivation and this is where the story could take an interesting turn. The kidnapping of Kobe doesn't add up and this is where we can see where Oda is taking the story. There are a few questions on both sides but let's start with Blackbeard. Why would he kidnap Kobe? What does he gain by kidnapping him? To answer the first question, I made a video about the current situation. This appears to be a similar situation to when he captured Ace and instigated a war between the Marines and Whitebeard in order to get him where he wanted and except this time, Luffy is the target. The fact that Luffy is Garp's grandson is no secret and the news of Luffy's victory over Kaido is well known to the entire world as Morgan's made sure to spread it far and wide. Teach has most likely seen the posters and he knows what it means. We all know how much of a power manga he is so we cannot shy our eyes from the fact that this man will do whatever it takes to have said power. Luffy's fruit represents the ultimate power which is imagination and Teach at this point in the story wants it all. He's a coward and that's what makes him dangerous because his next move is always unpredictable. Kidnapping Kobe was a total gamble but this is his main goal, to lure the marines in and get Luffy's attention in the process. He has the advantage on the field and the upper hand in terms of power so this appears to be the perfect plan. But, but, and I say this is a big but, Garp has a few tricks up his sleeve. For the longest time now, there has been speculation surrounding Garp's involvement in the secret agency within the Marines known as SWORD. And it is believed that he may be the leader of this organization, which I kind of believe is correct because how else could Kobe and Helmampo have joined? So conveniently enough, Kobe was captured and Kuzan joined the Blackbeard crew. Mind you, out of all the crews of the New World, he chose to join that one specific specifically. Not to mention Law might have also been captured so already one of these guys is a known member of SWORD and the rest are speculated to be members. Kobe's capture might not have been planned but it was perfect timing, an excuse to go after Blackbeard. Now let me tell you who I believe is the true leader of SWORD. And I believe this man is Sengoku because he is the only one of the two who has been known to carry out stealth missions in the past. Garp may simply be a member like everyone else. Kuzan is definitely a member of SWORD and the possibility of Law being a member is also quite likely mainly because of the Sengoku part. In such a situation, rather than losing all the pieces on your board, the best course of action is to act as quickly as possible because Teach has become volatile after the abolishment of the Shishibukai system. Sengoku might have recognized the growing threat of Teach after the Paramount War and since then he set a plan in motion to defeat this threat. Which also raises a few eyebrows to the legitimacy of Akainu's win against Kuzan because I mean if Kuzan had succeeded the fleet admiral position it would have restricted his movements. But this is where plot wise it would be a good move to use this to initiate the final clash between Luffy and Teach. Because for Luffy to finally realize the threat of Marshal D. Teach, he must first feel the fear of losing someone dear to him yet again. And in this case seeing as how their forces will most likely be overwhelmed, Garp might be captured. Because if he dies it would defeat the entire point of what Luffy stands for at the moment. Because if his motivation is turned to vengeance the battle between oppression and freedom will be meaningless. But if he goes after Teach in order to protect his beloved grandfather and prevent a repetition of events, then he would retain what he currently stands for which is freedom. The moment he goes for revenge, he becomes a slave to vengeance. Now personally, I really don't want Garp to lose this war but from the information we reviewed, if it was a one on one battle, he would win but it seems he will lose and rightfully so for the sake of the story. But again, this all depends on who he takes with him to this fight because even with Kuzan, Lo, Kobe, Sengoku and Fujitora I highly doubt they would make it out. Mind you currently the only reason Teach will win this is because of his crew and I believe if anyone dies it might be and this is a huge might be it might be Kuzan. So with all of the stats taken into account Teach is definitely winning this war. Don't forget to smash the subscribe button and destroy the notification bell for future mossy content and please tell me if you spotted the hidden NL.